Okay, so you buy yourself a laser your own self. That's for the grammar police. Okay, you bought yourself a laser. You've got to kind of assemble. And I'm going to use this one here as an example because I just put this together. I did an assembly video on it and we did a startup. But I have not checked dimensions. And the, why I say that is because and this is in response to a lot of emails and messages I get. You know, I bought a laser that says it's 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter. I downloaded your layout grid, uh, spoil board grid, and I go to engrave it and it hits the limits or it bangs into the end and I get a hard limit, soft limit, alarm, and I, it won't work. But it says it's 400 millimeter square. Well, yes, that particular grid is 400 millimeter. I have a couple other different sizes on there. Not every laser will take exactly what they state. And as I said, I have not checked this one yet. Uh, this one has a stated working area of 410 millimeters square. Um, I know there are a couple brands out there that will state their working area like at uh, 400 millimeter by 410 millimeter but the actual engraving area is like 396 by 365 or something like that. So yeah, you wouldn't be able to put a 400 millimeter spoil board grid on that. So as I said, this is stated to have 410 millimeter square. I'm gonna show you how to uh, check out your laser in Lightburn. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn. And I've got this Mac Powell laser. As I said, I just put it together. Haven't really done any real tests on it. So we're going to draw a square. Make any size you want like that. I'm going to change this to M&Ms. So leaving that padlock unlocked so we can make this perfect square. We're going to go 410. And 410. So now we have a 410 millimeter square. We're not actually going to cut or engrave this, so it doesn't matter what your layer setting is. It makes no difference. Um, set yourself up to absolute coordinates. We'll go up here to this little cross and center that. Now that is a 410 millimeter square, exactly, and the stated working area on this laser is 410 millimeter square. So now we're going to go and we're going to frame this and find out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to frame it. Well, why am I not getting... Okay, by rights, this should be framing, but it keeps telling me I have no layer set to output. Although it is set to output. So I'm going to change my dimension here to uh, 409. You know, I'll make sure that's centered. Now it frames. Okay, now it's framing at uh, 409 millimeter square at frames. We'll make sure that it doesn't run it. And we just got snagged up here on the air assist. That's because that's all curled up and cold. I'll have to start that over. So I'll stop that and send it back home. Frame this again. Now we hard limited or soft hit a soft limit over here. We banged into the side, so that's not going to work. So we'll take stop that. We'll send it back home. Okay, so now I am going to change this to 408. Then what I'm watching for here is the nozzle that goes into the side of the uh, this for the air assist. 
actually runs into the frame over here. So I'm going to have to alter my dimension again. I disconnected my air assist uh, hose because it was it's so curly and stiff that it was dragging the pump around with it. Let's see how we do on the y-axis. We were good there. Okay, because I was running into this interference on the right-hand side of this particular laser, and I could see where it was hitting. It was hitting on that air assist uh, connection to the laser head. So in this particular case on this one, uh, I've played with this till I've got it down to my actual operational engraving area on this particular laser is stated at 410 by 410 on the x-axis is actually 385 and on the y-axis 408 uh, this was a unique situation here with that air assist nozzle hitting over there so therefore when I kept changing my uh, framing here I had to set this so that it started over here on the left side that's where it homes to so uh, when I would start to frame, I couldn't start framing from like over here because I, for example, if I uh, would move this over to here and center it, well, it's still going to hit on that right hand side because of the air assist nozzle. So I have to set it over here. So let's say I wanted to burn a uh, 400 millimeter square grid in this stated 410 millimeter working area. I can't do it unless I would remove that air assist nozzle off of there. That's uh, a quirk to this particular laser. So you can see my, you know, the stated engraving area is 410 by 410. In reality, it's 408 on the Y and 385 on the, uh, you know, 385 on the uh, X axis. So now I think what I'm going to do is I'll just go grab another laser that I actually haven't done this check on and we'll see what it does. Okay, here I've got a uh, Adazer P20 connected on here. I've never run this test on here. I've usually just used this for engraving on some big things where I just take this wherever I'm going. Doesn't have a baseboard. Uh, something I've always intended on doing and now that I drag it down here, I may do that. Uh, the stated working area on this one is 430 millimeter by 430 millimeter. That's actual stated engraving area. So I've made a 430 millimeter square, and I've centered it on here, again, working from absolute coordinates. We'll frame this and see how it goes. So here we go to frame this at 430 by 430, and we'll see what it does. I have had some lasers that frame just fine, and others that uh, not so much. You gotta adjust it by a millimeter or two. Okay, we're good on the X. And we're good on the Y. So this one is what it's stated to be. And I have had others where it's stated to be and some that are off by one or two millimeters. Uh, that the one we did here at first, if, if it wasn't for that air assist nozzle uh, connection on the side of that laser head, it, it probably would have gone uh, its full 408, 410 millimeter. But because that sticks out so far, you're limited to 385. So here, yeah, 410 by 4, or 430 by 430, we're, we're good to go. So that's how you can determine what your actual engraving area is. You know, again, some of them will give you a stated working area. Uh, while that working area is not necessarily the engraving area, you may have to run some tests on your own. Uh, and again, this is in response to, I get a lot of messages, you know, hey, I downloaded your 400 millimeter square uh, spoil board grid and my laser is supposed to be 400 millimeter and I get a hard limit, soft limit, but it bangs, it doesn't do it. Uh, this is a test you can run first before you actually try to do that engrave. Uh, so if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. Uh, on our website there are several different size uh, grids that you can uh, download. If let's say you are running at 399 millimeter by 398 millimeter, you can resize the grid in light burn. Just shrink it down a little bit, make it fit. No, those 10 millimeter spacings will no longer be precise, but unless you're building a space shuttle, uh, you may not need that. This, the center will still be the center, 
and the lines will still keep you square. Just the measurements will be off just a hair. So, I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.